Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's location is a little bit different. I've moved from my office to in front of my Christmas tree just because I wanted to make it a little bit more festive because I'm going to be talking about Christmas. Now the title of today's video is what to expect when you quit keto and the reason I wanted to make this video is just because with Christmas coming up there may be um, a bigger scope for those of you who are normally on keto just to come off it for a day or two just around the holidays um, to be able to eat what family is eating etc. So although it is a choice um, don't feel bad if you're backed into a corner and you have no choice but to go ahead and, and eat carbs or eat something that you shouldn't have. Um, my overriding message with all of this is you are not going to break something that cannot be fixed and that's the magic of keto that if you decide to take a week off you decide to take a month off when you go back you'll be able to undo all the damage that you've done during that time be it weight gain or or whatever it is um so what i wanted to talk about today was just what to expect after the fact or while you're eating carbs and i'm speaking from my own experience here um if you've never visited my channel before um i've just recently moved house and it was quite a big move and during that very stressful time and um, i went off keto just because i didn't have the time or the headspace to plan my meals properly and um, to be able to find keto food when i was in the middle of the move um motorway service stations are not the most keto friendly places believe it or not um so i want to talk about my experience of going off keto and what you can expect based on my experience and based on some research i did just um reading about other people's experiences and now i am sitting on the floor today and i have got a christmas tree and cats so the combination may mean many interruptions so let me just apologize in advance so the first thing that i noticed when i started burning carbs was that i became very tired um much quicker than i did before and it's it, it's the kind of tired that gets into your bones and and i could feel my bone bones in my arms while, while i was driving just felt my arms felt really heavy and it was a really strange sensation because it's not like it's not mental tiredness although that's something completely different than i did definitely have that but this is feeling alert um feeling my brain was awake but the rest of my body was just tired and lethargic and i felt almost a weakness now not not in the same sense of you know if you think you're going to faint or um or anything like that it's a weakness more of just a lack of strength and that bone aching tiredness is um i think it's very unique to um to reintroducing carbs into the diet along with that is a restless sleep pattern i find, found it quite difficult to sleep properly um for maybe two weeks and um what what i was feeling was um almost like a, a, an anxiety so i had like rapid heartbeat and when i was sleeping i was waking up every couple of hours and i'm sure it's to do with the sugar and um the effect that the sugar had on my body when i reintroduced the carbs but it made for feeling on one hand extremely tired the body's tired and you just want to be able to rest it to lying down to go sleep and waking up every two hours and tossing and turning so i found that quite difficult the third thing that i noticed was pain now i must have had this i mean i remember having painful knees um when i was at my highest weight and i always contributed that or attributed that to the fact that i was extremely clumsy which i kind of realize now sorry cat just ran by me don't you dare um i always um associated that with the fact that i was clumsy but i think the clumsiness was to do with imbalance because i carried all my weight around my stomach so i feel like 
I was always unbalanced and falling forward. Um, and I had fallen quite a few times in the last five years quite badly. Um, I injured my leg, my knee badly, so badly that, that it took about 16 weeks to heal. Um, so if you, if you injure yourself and then you've got um, all that weight on top of it, it's, it's a recipe for, for a disaster. But actually when I reintroduced the carbs, the pain in my knees came back. And I think it's to do with this systemic inflammation that carbs causes within the body, that low level burning fire in the body that contributes to cancer, contributes to heart disease. And I felt it quite quickly, maybe on the second or third day of, of eating carbs, I felt this joint pain. I felt it in my knees and I felt it in my back as well. I actually um, felt like I had pulled muscles in my back. and it was it went went immediately when i cut out the carbs again went back on keto it went away and it hasn't been back since so um I, whether it was coincidence or not i with me i don't think so and from what i've read of other people's experiences um it seems to be pretty um universal that if you've had inflammation issues before um even things like arthritis gets worse when you reintroduce the carbs. So definitely watch out for joint pain. Another thing that I noticed was that I over ate. Now, it may not come as a surprise, but let me explain why it happened. So when I, back when I was burning carbs, I was trying to eat healthily. So um, I always ate whole meal food, whole meal wheat, um, I ate, uh, everything was low fat and um, I would have things like oatmeal for breakfast and just try my best to be healthy but I could eat a lot of food and I would have breakfast at 7am, I'd be hungry at 9, hungry at 11, hungry at 1 and I just was able to eat a lot of food and when I started on keto obviously during the, f the first period um, the appetite usually goes away completely and in my case that's what happened but now the volume of food that i eat is much much less because obviously fat is more calorically dense so i don't need to eat as much of it to get what i need so it's quicker to satisfy so we're always saying that right fat to satiety and it doesn't take much fat to make you feel full however remove the fat add in carbs and you've got food that's first of all very quickly digestible spikes your blood sugar really high causing a dip that your body says go get me more carbs so if you think about it two hours after eating is a good time to check your blood glucose if it's still high then you know you've got insulin issues or if it's too low um so i found that the volume of food that I ate increased exponentially because it wasn't able to satisfy me as quickly um, because it had a low fat content and, and low protein content. So what I found helped in that situation, if you're going to have carbs, there are ways of making the carbs more satisfying and therefore you'll eat less calories. So what you can do is if you're going to have a slice of bread, make sure you slap a thick layer of butter on that, that, um, that bread, because what will happen is if you eat the, the butter and the bread together, the high fat content and the protein in the butter slows down the glycemic load of the bread. So eating them together it means you if you eat just the bread your your blood sugar is going to skyrocket but if you add some fat some some nice fat in on top of that it slows down the release of those carbohydrates not ideal but better than just eating the bread by itself because it will help you first of all get satisfied quicker which means you'll eat less carbs and you'll eat less uh, calories overall and secondly you're still getting um a good a good fat and it might help you stay, stay fuller for longer. So another thing that I noticed was bloating 
and general overall digestive issues the bloating was just crazy i looked eight months pregnant and it was painful under my ribs just was so painful and nothing i took um mint tea um and ct none of it worked it was um i think it was water weight i'm not sure but it was it was a lot there was a lot of bloating and it, it took quite a while for it to go back to normal and the digestive issues in general were were pretty bad i had um it was almost like irritable bowel every time i ate my body reacted i had pain um i had oh the farting oh my god you don't realize how little you fart on keto until you reintroduce carbs i could not believe it and it was even worse because it was uncontrollable like these suckers were coming out without me realizing it and it was just a real shock because i didn't realize um that this was something that i that i had gone from doing a lot to not doing it all i remember um when i was sitting in the office and my stomach used to gurgle and it was so embarrassingly loud and i know the people beside me could hear me and they must have thought what is she doing what, what is she eating um, but that all went away with keto and I didn't get that anymore but that came back with a vengeance and my stomach made so much noise it was embarrassing um, so overall digestive issues is something you can look forward to I suppose the final thing is just an, a general overall feeling of being ill I had it was painfully um, sensitive to touch my skin um i know i had the return of the of systemic inflammation because i just felt unwell and i missed keto i missed being completely in control of my appetite being completely in control of what i eat and not being driven by some biochemical urge to get those carbs back in me so if you do decide that you're going to have a few days off over Christmas. These are some of the really fun things you can look forward to. If you decide to take a break from keto over the Christmas holidays, you may experience all or none of the side effects that I've discussed here today. Either way, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you again next time.